Hey guys, what's up? So I've had a few questions about um, how I actually taught myself to become a programmer, and I just want to take a moment to kind of address how I did that. Um, I went a little bit of an unconventional way because I never went to school to learn uh, to, to become a programmer. I've actually never taken a computer science course at all. And don't get me wrong, I'm not here to say that like what I did was right and going to school is, is stupid or whatever because I don't agree with that at all. In fact, I wish I, I would have gone to school, but uh, everybody's path is different in life. And um, with my particular case, I mean, I went from, um, you know, I've been a truck driver, um, like I've delivered pizzas and I've done plumbing and HVAC work and uh, I've done all kinds of different professions. I was one of those guys... Um, who had to fix my own car so I would teach myself how to do that on YouTube and I mean I did things like transmissions and rack and pinions and uh, all kinds of horrible repairs that I had no idea what I was doing but I taught myself you know through the um, through the channels available on the internet so I think that the internet has definitely um, you know created this new revolution of just information which is crazy um, and unfortunately a lot of people take it for granted and, and they don't they don't use it to their advantage in fact they use it kind of to make themselves stupider in my opinion uh, in a lot of cases I mean people that just tweet everything or um, uh, just constantly commenting about their their lives on Facebook and saying stupid things that they should never say uh, in front of you know respective em or prospective employers and um, bottom line is that I use the internet to actually be able to teach myself uh, how to program so I started off with uh, CSS, and really before I even jumped into CSS, I had decided that I wanted to be a web developer, and this was around 2009 or so, um, so Facebook at that point was like blowing up, and when I looked at Facebook, I'm like, oh, I can build a better website than Facebook, and you know, not knowing anything about what I was talking about, I I'd had this like ambition and this dream, um, really my dream drove my ambitions, and um, you know that's a huge thing I think starting out uh, if you're going to teach yourself because um, you have to be disciplined and probably the greatest asset will be uh, determination so that you don't give up so um, you know let yourself believe that you can build the next Facebook or whatever it may be to actually get you to where you want to be um, that's my probably my biggest advice for for having to to learn something like this because uh, it, it's not going to be easy at all so I decided I wanted to build this uh, music website, and then I ended up um, using Adobe Illustrator, where I was actually drawing out my templates, and I got like you know basically my home page of what I wanted it to look like, and it looked really good and everything. Um, so then my next step was like, okay, I need to learn basically the um, the styling language of the web, which is CSS, um, stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So I started with that. Um, I actually started with a CSS 3.0 book. I can't even remember what it was called though. Um, oh, I think it was called The Hidden Manual, actually. Um, CSS 3.0, The Hidden Manual. Uh, that was a great book. In fact, that was probably the best book I've ever had in any programming language at all because uh, I had tried CSS, I believe, in other books and even going online and stuff like that, and I, I just couldn't figure it out. And a lot of people might be like, oh, CSS is easy, but you'd be surprised. I work with a lot of people. I've worked with a lot of people uh, in the past that really don't know CSS at all. I mean, and they find it very difficult. So... CSS on its own can be very difficult. So when you're first starting out, I mean, don't think it's just going to be easy. Some people might say it's easy. Some people are going to say it's like impossible. Um, the balance is in between there somewhere. So um, everybody learns at their own pace, and I don't think it's anything that's that's just easy to pick up if you have no kind of background in programming. Um, I mean, hell, you don't even understand how a browser works and what a DOM tree is and all that stuff. I mean, you're just like you barely know what a selector is and in fact even like you have these words like selector and grandfather and children and all that stuff and you're just like you're trying to make sense of it and it's just weird you know it's weird coming from a non-programming background um, so long story short there I um, I ended up moving from CSS um, over to JavaScript jQuery and I, I was at this crosswords where, where jQuery was popular and a lot of people were like well you don't even really need to learn JavaScript anymore. You can just learn jQuery, so just pick up on that. Um, and that's kind of where I picked up um, because I was like, I don't want to learn JavaScript from scratch if I could just use jQuery. So jQuery makes a lot of things very easy and um, little things you need to do like hide and show stuff. Um, so I still recommend that somebody probably look at jQuery even before JavaScript if they're really looking to hit the ground running. 
Um, if you want to, you know, be a next level web developer and get into like Angular and React or something like that, then I would say probably focus a lot more on JavaScript. But uh, for simple web development, I mean, it's still about jQuery and jQuery plugins um, even now. So um, that's not bad advice at all there. So jQuery was a struggle for me, um, not understanding scripting languages or functional languages like like uh, JavaScript and and then not really understanding what a JavaScript library was or how to create my own. I, I just basically kind of luck boxed or, or guessed my way through how to get things to work in jQuery. And, and, it, and every part of this path was just painstaking. But um, you know, probably six months into my development, I was actually building real web pages um, you know, that did stuff. Like you hover over a navigation and drop down or you click this and it showed you know, hidden data and stuff like that. And, and it looked pretty because um, I was using you know templates and stuff that existed. And nowadays we have, you know, Bootstrap. So why learn CSS from scratch when you can just kind of learn Bootstrap way? But I mean, if you truly want to be uh, a really good developer, a full stack developer, you you, sh you have to know CSS. I mean, Bootstrap does not solve all your problems. Um, so after jQuery, I, I then ended up moving on to a language like I needed a server side language. I need something to be able to to run on the server to be able to take data to interpret what needs to be done and and you know and what to display and things like that and um I started off with Perl for some weird reason um I thought Perl would be a good idea at the time Perl was still like you know touted as like the Amazon language and um, it still had a much, it had a bigger following than what it does now, and it still has a decent following. It's just it's been falling off the map because of languages like um, Python, really taking a lot away from it. Um, but I started with Perl, and and the problem with Perl is that it, you can do like everything you do in Perl. There's like ten different ways of doing it, right? Um, and the community is not nearly as strong online as some of the other languages I've dealt with. And this is before even Stack Overflow was blowing up in popularity. Um, so getting getting information on how to accomplish a certain task in, in Perl was like really difficult because Perl is one of these languages where you can try to make things all on one line and as creative as possible. And like basically, you make it. It's almost like it's almost like there's an entire mantra of of it's cool to make your code so unreadable that nobody else, including yourself, is ever going to figure out what the hell you just wrote. So it's very, very um, difficult for newcomers to come along and look at that kind of code, and and be able to be able to expand their skills basically. Because my issue was that um, it, you know you have to do something over and over again, especially in programming, for it to make sense and become second nature and to remember how to do it the next time you need it. And with Perl, every time I'd have to go back and be like, okay, how do I do a for loop or how do I open a file or do this or chomp and, and you know I had like every time I went to a different website or whatever there was like some other way of doing it so and that's you know Perl's whole you know nature is that there's more than one way to do it um, I ended up getting frustrated and I ended up moving over to Python so I started with um, my the learning Python I think it was like fifth edition with the mouse on it huge book and um, that was probably the second most influ influential book that I've ever had in my programming career because um, you know, he immediately, the author immediately jumped into the entire, you know, Python versus Perl, which used to be a big debate that, you know, Perl dominated Python all through the 90s, um, but then into the 2000s, and, and especially uh, once the MVC, like Ruby on Rails days came along, Python just ate Perl's lunch, I mean, as far as, um, you know, getting a community growing and everything, so um, he immediately addressed that within the book, which I thought was cool because I was coming from Perl, I was like, oh, yeah. You know, but he wasn't bashing Perl and saying use Python or anything like that. He gave this completely um, unbiased review of the two different languages, which I thought was really cool. So um, just with Python, things were just so much easier. How do I open a file? How do I read a file line by line? Okay, now I'm looking for a particular piece of text in Python. Okay, I need to use regular expressions. Um, and granted, um, in case you any Perl guys are out there, Perl regular expressions are better than Python. I understand that Perl is better at regular expressions than any other language since they invented it, I believe, um, or at least revolutionized it. But um, with with Python, just everything made sense. If I didn't understand how to do something, I would go online, and there, you know, somebody would have some, you know, highly uh, regarded way of, of of accomplishing something, which they refer to as Pythonic, and um, 
and it just made sense. So Python, instead of, you know, there's multiple ways of doing it in Perl, there's just one way of doing it in Python, or at least one right way, and they call that the Pythonic way. So I embrace that, especially as a newbie coming along trying to figure this stuff out. I mean, I don't, I don't need, you know, craftiness and, and cuteness when I'm trying to learn how to do something, and Python was just, you know, it, it required that I indent my code to make it readable, not only for other people, but for myself. And um, the community was was blowing up at that point too because the Django web framework was had, was just getting you know getting getting popular and other Python frameworks were springing up and um, I remember I actually got involved in um, like I started with Django uh, well actually I'll, I'll jump to that now so after I had gotten Python down enough I started with like Python scripts right so I would build single python files that would become uh, complicated i mean my code was so sloppy i had i think i had one python file one time that was like sixteen thousand lines of code or some some ridiculous thing like that i mean my editor would crash when i brought up my python code it was this big ass complicated scraping program that just went from like not even function to function like it was just like in a straight line blah 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 like all the way down like it was not robust the slightest thing broke it um, I don't even really remember what I was doing. I, I know I was taking data from the web and then parsing that data and then storing that data. And oh my God, like I wish I I wish I would have saved that program to either. I don't even know if I'd show you guys. I'd probably not be. I'd probably be too embarrassed to show you guys. But um, I, I'd like to see it myself because I mean that that would have been just atrocious. And this was like four years ago, five years ago, something like that. I think it was like five years ago around that. And um. And that's a, a good thing too. When you're a programmer, like you notice month over month how well you're growing, and and you can just see changes. Um, yeah, sometimes as short as a month, you're you you've seen that you've grown. Um, unfortunately, we probably also forget that or fail to see that we forget some of the things that we've already learned as well. Because there have been times that I go back and I have to learn something again. Um, it's usually quicker the second time around, but there you know you do you do lose information if you're not in into something day to day. So after you know building these these programs to collect all this data, I, I needed to build a website, and um, I, that's when I ended up jumping into Django. But Django I found was like really complicated. Um, there's just so much to it, and um, just even trying to grasp like how it's modular based, like it's all about components and, and Python and Django, and um, you know like these apps that you build are supposed to be self-contained. And I just never, I couldn't really grasp that. You know, it's like. I didn't understand how anything could be self-contained. I didn't even really know what self-contained meant in, in programming. Um, so I ended up jumping to another web framework for a while, which was uh, Web2Py. Um, and I was, you know, I actually had a decent relationship with some of the founders, like Massimo, and I'm still friends with him on Facebook. And um, there was a few guys on, on his team that were just very, very helpful, a guy named Bruno. and. Um, I really like their framework. In fact, I, you know, I probably should have stuck around a little bit longer, but um, I ended up jumping back to Django at some point and um, never really looked back because, you know, after I did that, like I was able to get my apps in the Google App Engine. Um, from there, I built a um, so I built a music website and I built a movies website and I, I built all these different types of websites and I ended up getting you know the full time programming gig mostly as a UI guy up, up front because my JavaScript and CSS skills were better than a lot of the people that I worked with so um, and that was you know without any sort of training whatsoever and I found that stuff to be easy at that point I was more um, you know struggling with like server side and uh, different programming philosophies and uh, and things like that and um, and you know, uh, design structures and so and, and I'm still kind of expanding on those parts I think in my career now so um, I mean that's really that's really the story. I mean the the whole the whole bottom line is that you need to have dedication and that's probably the most important thing because none of this stuff is going to be easy. Programming's not easy. The smartest people in the world don't simply just learn programming like it's nothing. I mean they don't just learn it overnight. Um you're going to make the mistake of thinking you know more than you really do and I think that um, as you become a better programmer, at least in myself, I've seen that I don't know everything. In fact, my confidence level now is probably lower than, um, well, I wouldn't say it's like lower than it's ever been, but I, I'm very, very restrained as far as what I feel like I'm capable of. I, I feel like I'm a good developer. Um, 
a lot of times I look at other people around me and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I, I code for fun. These guys, you know, they don't code at all for fun. And, um, and, and I think that shows a lot. Um, but I don't let it get to my head because, uh, it's a constant everyday struggle to be a programmer as far as, um, you know, trying to make sure you don't get, you get burned out and, um, and just recognizing that you don't know everything and that, uh, there's always something that you can learn from somebody else, and and even if if you don't see that they have you know the the more modern skills that you have, I mean if they've been in the programming game for a long time, I mean they they have a lot of information about a lot of important things like you know writing requirements or um, making sure that you know all all requirements are, are reviewed you know thoroughly for mistakes or um, giving accurate time frames and all that stuff and. I mean that that is that is all part of becoming a programmer as well. But you're really not going to get that kind of expertise until you get into a production gig. Um, and one another important thing too is um, unit testing. I mean, uh, unit testing was like never on my plate when I was getting started. And now, I mean, you'll get you get laughed at. I mean, you got to unit test your code. I mean, it, whether it's in JavaScript or even or C sharp or Python, you should be unit testing everything. Django has this whole unit testing um, built into their apps. I mean, they create a test file for you, but um, I mean, a lot of the Django people I was talking to, they, I mean, they never even used them, and I wasn't using them either. So, like, it's really not a good idea, um, but you got to take things one step at a time, and, um, and it's easy to get overwhelmed, I think. So that's my story, guys. I mean, I started basically what is a website html template draw up a template make that template in the real code using css html and javascript um, and jquery or whatever sort of library you want to use then it, it comes time to doing a server-side language um, it might be best to actually learn the the language itself you know doing what, what i did like um, you know building little scraper scripts and things like that um, these self-contained little programs before moving on to like a giant MVC application like Django or Ruby on Rails or something because there's a lot of magic going on underneath the scenes or b behind the curtains um, with a framework like that so you're not going to know any of it getting started and, um, and it can be maybe too daunting for some people and maybe turn them off to the entire idea so you got to keep things small but once you're ready to go into the framework then you need to also learn the other stuff that goes along with that okay how do I set up a cloud host you know if I'm doing a Linux server how do I um, set up my ports and my firewalls and um, how do I set up my database and and then I need to actually set up a web server am I going to use Apache or Nginx and then uh, maybe I use both and um, yeah and just I mean so it, it, there's there's a ton to it man but it's just one one thing at a time and eventually you'll be surprised at how far you've come so anyway guys uh, I hope that gives some sort of insight into what I did I mean that whole process took me years so uh, I'm still learning every day and I'm just uh, I'm thankful to be in this gig though I mean I, I like being a programmer it's it's fun and I, I would recommend it and programmers get paid pretty well all right guys thanks please subscribe have a good day bye